I don't know whether you have noticed, but uh, it seems as if we have a lot of good Samaritans here in South Africa. Initially, it was communists and socialists who always talk about the basic income grant. But now, if you read maybe your financial mail or business times, you're starting to see even economists start talking about basic income grant. Maybe they're not uh, economists or they're just people who have been given a platform to talk about the basic income grant on financial publication. Maybe that's maybe that's, that could be the reason. Because we have the talk of basic income grant, the talk of minimum wage, and now we're having the relief of uh, COVID-19 the 350 rands that everyone is getting and um, it looks like it's Oprah Winfrey uh, gift season and the big question that most people don't ask is like where does this money come from because money doesn't grow from trees for real you have to, to respect that expression and, and how much money do we have as South Africa in terms of our GDP? The, the answer is here on this independent online article. South African debt burden will reach 90% of GDP by 2021. In other words, if we're making one trillion in a year, okay, we're just going to be left with about uh, 100 billion, that's it, 100 billion rents. That will be our money. The rest of the 90% of amount is debt that we have to pay to countries that we owe and so forth. The article by Mialani Mkabela, published on 27th of April this year of 2020, Johannesburg. South Africa's debt burden will rise over the next five years under any plausible economic and fiscal scenario. Debt to gross domestic product GDP increased by 10 percentage point from 2014 to 2018. South Africa recorded a government debt equivalent to 62.2 percent of the country's GDP in 2019. That's last year. Most estimate that the debt burden will reach 91 percent of GDP by fiscal 2023, inclusive of the guarantee to guarantees to state-owned enterprises that's uh, SOEs from 69% at the end of fiscal 2019. President Asero Ramaphosa's economic and social measures have surely moved the government debt to GDP value from the 62.2% to about 70%. You have that. But all you hear is all these NGOs and communist parties, your SACP, your EFF, and say that everybody got to get their thousands, okay? So let me just give you a quick example of the amount of money that would be uh, needed for, for this basic income grant. I'm just giving you, remember there's about 17 to 18 million people who are receiving uh, grants each and every month. So we're going to get the clear numbers now because of covid a whole lot of people queued up to get their 350 rand, so the number is going to be more. Who knows? It's going to be more to 25 to 30 million. We'll see. But we're just going to work with 17 million of the people who are getting <coughs> SASA. That's and uh, this uh, basic income grant, okay? They're advocating that um, like an individual should get 1,227 rents per month okay that's just an example so we'll just scale it down to 1000 okay so 1000 so 17 million times 1000 okay so that 17 million per month would equate to about 17 billion and then it will be 17 billion times 12 which is 12 months okay that will be about 204 billion per year 204 billion per year and this year as we speak because the famous Becky Tele with his handsomely looking fedora you know he buy those nice hats and his job is to stop uh, liquor stores and taverns are his specialties okay 
So as a result, we've already lost 300 billion rands in terms of collections for the alcohol and the cigarettes. Okay? And we need 204 billion per year for this basic uh, income grant. Okay? So here the article states, the concept of a universal basic income grant, as it has generally been defined, is one of an equal payment made by the state to every person or citizen of a country from birth to death, regardless of whether that person has an income. This confers the dignity of equal status to everyone, eliminates the need for any means, test, or other qualification, thus saving the state the expense of maintaining a system to administer such tests, whatever that means. Reduces the risk of corruption in the administration process and allow for an immediate end to absolute abject, abject poverty. So this stupid article says you end poverty by taxing the few people who are working and then distributing that amount of money to millions and millions of South Africa. It, it doesn't even, I mean, it's not even their job. It doesn't even talk about encouraging of a good environment, uh, reduction of uh, regulations in order to enable small businesses and medium enterprises to be able to hire more people. That's 17 million, which is on uh, on grants, SASA grants, to then be able to work, earn some salary, and then get taxed, and then even a few number of people who are then not working would be able to get a decent amount of uh this universal grants that they're talking about. I mean, this is a joke. So it continues. It creates the incentive for a rapid injection of expenditure into the economy as people acquire the ability to buy food and other necessities. Again, I come, raid your wallet, take your money, give it to someone else who's not working, and then as a result, that will be a good fertile opportunity for that individual to be able to spend the money and circulate the currency in the nation and therefore uh, the economy will boom. I mean, this article is crazy. Okay? It continues. Those who already have an income from employment or investments could also use the additional spending power to boost expenditure. Do you hear what I'm, I'm reading? The article also concedes, it says that even those who have an income from employment or investments could also use the additional spending power, okay? The rated money from the taxpayers, okay? okay? To boost expenditures. While increased tax revenue would accrue to the fiscals, the spread of energy this could bring to the depressed state of the marketplace would be met by a spirit of optimism and opportunity urgently required to inspire hope and create and creative endeavors i mean whoa 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 and by the way it says these are the solutions the government must implement permanent social assistance for those aged 18 to 59 valued at the upper bound poverty line now 1227 a month caregivers who receive the child support grant must qualify for this grant so it continues make the COVID 19 grant increase of 250 a month okay so in other words on top of the 350 rands that the government is giving uh, as a relief to folks who are not working you must add 250 that will be 250 plus 350 will be about 600 bucks so woo, 600 bucks i hope my math is ensure the above provisions apply to refugees okay this 600 bucks also should go to refugees so you should do the calculations uh, as to how many refugees we have asylum seekers as well and migrant workers with special permits work towards a universal basic income okay so we have to do an addition in terms of calculations here i think maybe that will be about 500 billion if you include these numbers 500 billion uh of tax money Remember, we, last year we made about one trillion. I think it was the biggest tax uh, that we have collected. We made one trillion. So with this, uh, everybody get, get a gift. You get a gift. You get a gift. From It's from the Black Sash, one of the uh, non-governmental organizations. So the 500, you can imagine, you slash one trillion, the 500 billion is gone. 
the 500 billion which should be in, should be invested in, into the economy into funding entrepreneurs so that this large number of millions and millions of people who are not uh, employed to get jobs so that they can be paid and then contribute more into the tax no you make the few million people camels okay who are going to be carry a burden of paying tax to a few number of people and this is an incentive by the way to make people uh, i mean you could quit your job and then wait for someone who's working to be taxed and then you get something else and then as a result how many people will be then quitting jobs to get free money i mean this is the most silly uh proposal that normally comes through add to that we're going to be having the national health insurance folks okay and this is nothing you have you they like saying you ain't seen nothing yet i mean this is nothing when the national health insurance comes through whoa the amount of money whoa of tax i mean they're saying there's going to be three ways in which they're going to make uh to get the money for this uh national health insurance okay there are several options for raising revenue to fund the national health insurance and the funding will be through a combination of various sources the main sources of general tax revenue in south africa are number one personal income tax number two value added tax and number three uh charges okay and payroll taxes i mean it's just gonna be it's going to be crazy okay so your tax is going to be increased okay i mean south africans pay from 30 percent to 45 percent of uh their income tax so if you if you make 10 rands per month okay uh or let's just say 100 rands per month the government take up to 45 rands of your money and leave you with 55 rands so they also talk about vat remember when they move vat from 14 percent to 15 percent and they're like whoa oh this is punishing the poor in terms of bread milk and eggs we are going to go through with a fine tooth comb um all those things that the poor the marginalized uh, uh, uh poor of south africa uh, are going through in terms of i mean what we need to do is we're going to make sure that this 15 percent vat is going to uh, effectively uh action on people who can be able to afford it we're sorry uh, poor folks we're going to make sure that bread only bread and uh sh sugar milk and eggs uh, we're going to take that back to 14 percent. i don't know how they are un entangled that situation right now so if you look at the national health insurance folks they're not only talking about moving from 14 percent of vat to they're talking about moving it to 15 to 16 percent okay so you have not seen nothing yet and it doesn't stop and i always talk about this um minimum wage story that people like and say oh this industry must get 15 15 rands the problem with minimum minimum wage is it, this is set by government it's not being set by markets okay so every time the government comes through and start talking about economy and start to effect policies that has to do with rents and cents they destroy the market and they cause unemployment let me give you an example okay a company might, might be paying its staff a minimum wage they're not even calling it minimum wage because they be checking their stock how well it's doing at the stock exchange and how the shares is doing and they say voluntarily start to pay their employees 25 rands or 30 rands okay per hour and then here comes the government and say we've seen that other we've seen that companies are paying their employees low wages from today we're going to uh put a minimum wage of 15 rands per hour and then the company that would be paying their employees 30 rands a lot oh look at what we're doing we are ex we have exceeded what even the government wants us to do 
and then they take the 15 rands away from each and every employee and the employee will be left with 15 rands and for, for those who were maybe paying the employees um 10 rands per hour they will simply combine with 15 percent per, per hour and then fire a certain number of employees so then they can be able to pl to pay those employees you see that's what one thing that people don't understand and sometimes i think uh, regulations in terms of this um they call them uh, labor brokers for example sometimes you find that the minimum wage that's been set which is high it makes it impossible for, for, for people to get into corporate companies in order to be able to work, in, in, to get an experience, okay? Because you could finish being an electrical engineer or a computer scientist and you're at home and you say, oh, okay, I need to go to a department of, uh, government department of communication. And you say, guys, I want to volunteer for three months for an experience. Let's just even talk about a corporate company. Well, corporate companies don't even allow you to do obviously to volunteer for free because of the legal jeopardies and problems that they will uh, experience with the government. You go to a department of communications for six months, you work to get an experience, boom! And then from that, maybe they give you another six months, you have a year experience, it's on your CV, you apply with a, to a corporate company and a corporate company hires you. They say you'll do an internship. You're gonna be getting 14 rand 50 cents per hour, okay? Oops, paperwork, we can't be able to hire you because we can't be able to afford the 50 cent that the government say that we should give you. We sorry, go home. Or else if you don't have that and the market starts to work itself out you'll be able to to get that 14 rand 50 cent per hour whack 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 have an experience and if you prove yourself you get a permanent job or you get promoted or you move to another company where you're going to sell your labor at a higher price there you are getting your 35 rands per hour boom and that's how you move up but uh, when you start talking to this communists and socialists and mostly politicians who've never worked a day in their life you start hit your head against a, a brick wall in terms of making sure that there's a social mobility in terms of people getting work so this is just my take about this universal uh, income grant you know, together with all, all those other nice ways in, in fact this is morally a good thing that that's the thing with morality it's morally a good thing you know people are working and they're not be able to make money to feed their family and this is immorally wrong by this company you see so it looks beautiful just like all this uh, socialist and, and communist um, principle they just look mm, beautiful on paper but when it comes to implementing them it's impossible they in fact um, unintentionally destroy jobs by millions and millions of jobs you should see it study all these communist nations from your Soviet, Soviet Russia Cuba in fact I mean they're still driving your 1950 cars and so forth you should look into those communist countries and see what's going on where there's uh, no free market capitalism. This is what you see. So, it's Mamuji. That's my take. And thank you for watching the Mamuji show. I'm out.